In the name of the Father and Son, Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Christ is risen, indeed he is risen. How are you everyone? Uh, we are here, we have George and Andrew. We come today just to want to talk with you about the resurrection icon and we're gonna talk about some father's sayings about resurrection. Please follow up, follow, follow with us on this presentation and let's all of us uh, aim to have the power of resurrection in our life and in all of our days. Okay, thank you Amir for the introduction. Um, so now let's start with the resurrection. Um, and we have this beautiful icon, uh, Greek icon of, uh, of the resurrection of Christ, the uh, dragon Adam and Eve. So in the center, our Lord Jesus Christ standing is wearing a white robe, a symbol of purity and radiating from the Lord, the uncreated divine light. The sun of righteousness has shone, the darkness of sin has dissipated, and humanity has regained the beauty of the divine image on which it was created. The golden halo behind the head of Christ is a sign of his divinity. In the middle of it, there is a cross and three letters are written on it in the Greek language, meaning one word, namely the being, meaning I am. This is exactly what the angel confirmed to Joseph, the betrothal of the Virgin Mary, the mother of God, by saying, and he is called Jesus because he saves his people from their sins. As the Lord Jesus Christ said to the Jews, before Abraham was, I am, and when you have lifted the Son of Man, you will know that I am. With both hands, the Lord raises Adam and Eve from the tomb and raises them up. The beautiful thing here is that Adam is dressed exactly like Christ. It is the divine grace. Eve also wears a purple dress expressing the divine glory, which is surrounded by the Virgin Mary, and everyone is invited to wrap him in turn if he accepts Christ as Savior and God to him and keeping his commandments. It's nice because we can see our Lord Jesus Christ raising up Adam and Eve, which is he's raising up the human nature. Because those guys, Adam and Eve, these are the first father and mother of all humanity, and he is raising them up. And this is what happened in resurrection. He is raising up the human nature. And this will reflect on us, and that's what we're going to see during this presentation. Thank you, George. Okay, so continuing on from George, the icon also indicates that Christ is the master of the universe. And this is what the three colors behind him mean. So there's the light blue, which is representing the sky, the middle blue, which represents the earth, and the dark blue, which represents hell. And the background of the icon is painted gold, expressing the heavenly kingdom. The congregation around the Lord Jesus is made up of people from the Bible. So on his right, we see the last prophet from the Old Testament, which is St. John the Baptist, who was referred to here by his hand. Uh, uh, and on his right side, we see King Solomon, the builder of the Temple of Jerusalem. And on his right, his father, King David, who from his, off who from his offspring came uh, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, on the left of the master, we see in sequence Abel, the shepherd, who was the first Marty in the Bible, who was killed treacherously and enviously. Next to him was the prophet Elijah and the prophet Moses, both of whom were spoken to by the Lord in the Old Testament. And they appeared with him uh, in the transfiguration in the New Testament. And that was before his crucifixion. That is before he went to Jerusalem to die and rise on the third day. And under the feet of Christ, we see the gates of hell are torn open. Satan is bound and defeated and the locks and nails of death are scattered, indicating that the Lord blew up hell by entering it and trampled death by death, and we all became standing in the Lord Jesus. That's why you are happy that Christ is risen, and indeed he is risen, and he raised us with him. We believe in this, and this will lead, or this is leading our lives. That's why when we go to Abuna and do a confession, and then... We raise up because uh, we are resurrected. So we come out from confession, resurrected from our sin, as our Lord Jesus Christ raising up, in, uh, uh, as you can see in this icon. And also the doxology we prayed in, uh, in, in the liturgy. 
since the day of resurrection to all of the 50 days, we pray and do we say the resurrection, res resurrection doxology. Look what we say. We say exactly what is in the icon. So the icon is explained in the doxology and doxology is explaining what's in the icon. Then our mouths are filled with joy and our tongues are rejoicing for our Lord Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. He has abolished death by his might and made life shine upon us. Life shine upon us the lights behind our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one who has descended to the lower parts of the earth, the gatekeepers of Hades saw him and were afraid. He abolished the bangs of death and he was not held by them. He has crushed the gates of brass and uh, broke the bars of iron and brought out his chosen ones with rejoicing and with joy that's why we are wealthy. We are wealthy with the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the source of our wealth. The source or the main source of our wealth is the resurrection of our uh, Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we say, Alleluia, 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 and so on. Continue, George. Ah, uh, yes. Um, so I, there's two hymns here. And the first one is the, in Greek. Uh, they're both actually Greek hymns. Um, the first one uh, is We the Believers, Hymn and Worship, the Logos, without beginning with the Father and the Spirit, having been born of a virgin for our salvation. For he appeared in the flesh to ascend on the cross. He persevered unto death and raised the dead through his glorious resurrection. Um, and the second uh, Greek one is uh, When the stone was sealed by the Jews and the soldiers were guarding your undefiled body, you rose on the third day, O Saviour, granting life to the world. For this reason, the heavenly powers cried out to you, O giver of life. Glory to your resurrection, O Christ. Glory to your kingdom. Glory be to your economy, O you who alone are lover of mankind. We have this icon, which is a Coptic icon in front of you. This Coptic icon, we, we, we see the, the, the put our Lord Jesus Christ, he has his royal robe or uh, uh, robe of kings because he is while he is in the cross we believe he is still a king he is a king that's why we say to him all over the week of Basra. and he has the bible in his left hand and he is pointing with his fingers that he is the lord he is the king and he is doing this for us and for our salvation, as we say in the creed. And also what uh, uh, George just read to us that uh, 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 this resurrection gave us life. This is the new life. And do we take this resurrection to lead us in our life? And when the Jewish people tried to seal the, uh, to, 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 to the stone was sealed, they think that they will limit him. They will limit our Lord Jesus Christ, but it didn't limit him. And he was able, and his resurrection power was in him. That's why he resurrected and gave us this new life. Uh, sorry, Uncle Henry, can we go back to the slide just quickly? Um, I, I see in, in, the, in the second part of, of the hymn to, to Lithos, it says, glory be to your economy. What, is, what does this mean, the economy, the economy of, of Christ? Wrong, wrong, uh, wrong, uh, wrong uh, translation. It's a dispensation, which is a planning. It means the planning. Mm. You're going to find this in Ephesians 1. Uh, when uh, when some Paul said uh, 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 the dispensation of the uh, times, all the times, which is uh, uh, God is looking to all the time. He's not looking to the time of incarnation. He's looking since or before creation to the end of life. That's what, we, mm. what, what does it mean, dispensation? Mm -hmm. It's just so like management. Know, it's the management, the planning, and, yes. uh, and uh, doing this. And he did this by himself. Okay, it's a really okay. good question. Thanks, Andrew. 
Neil Stern, Andrew. Okay. So now, now that we've uh, discussed the icon, we're going to look at some of the, the sayings of, of our church fathers and what their views on the resurrection are. So this first one is uh, from St. Ignatius of Antioch. Uh, the first one is about life in the risen Christ being the only true life. And it's from a letter to the Trillians. And he says, stop your ears, therefore, when anyone speaks to you at variance with Jesus Christ. And what he's saying is, when, when people start to speak about other beliefs or about uh, views that are not in accordance with the truth of the resurrection, he's saying, stop, stop listening. Don't, don't take heed to it. And the reason why he explains, because Christ, who was truly raised from the dead, his father quickening him, even as after the same manner, his father will so raise up us who believe in him by Christ Jesus, apart from whom we do not possess the true life. So as to say, like, he is, this resurrection of Christ, this isn't just Christ's resurrection by himself. This is Christ's resurrection for us to take part in, which is why it's so important to, to believe in it and to, to see that it is the truth and not to pay attention to, to views that, that don't that deny the resurrection or deny the, the divinity of Christ to say that he is the risen Lord. Um, and then the second saying, which is from the letter to the Ephesians, uh, is only let us be found in Christ Jesus unto the true life, apart from him, let nothing attract you. So again, the same idea. There's no need to look to other things for that, that attract us in terms of glory or in terms of power, because all the glory and, and only the only glory and the only power can be found in the risen Christ. Uh, and I think and if I can say, Uncle Amir, it's, it's amazing that he's saying this, because if we sit to the icon, uh, on the or the painting, sorry, on the on the right, this is uh, Saint Ignatius, very well known for 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 willingly go to his martyrdom, even though many of his believers were trying to stop him uh, from from dying, because he understood this point. He understood that there's nothing, there's no glory, and there's no there's no life outside the risen Christ. So, uh, I really like the painting. I love the quote. Thank you. And now we go to uh, our father, Father Athanasius, or Pope Athanasius. He is the patriarch of our church, number 20. If by the sign of cross and by faith in Christ, this is trampled underfoot, it must be evident before the tribunal of truth that it's none other than Christ himself that has displayed the trophies and the tri triumph over death and made him lose all his strength. And if, while previously death was strong and for that reason terrible, now after the sojourn of the savior and the death of resurrection of his body, it is despised. It must be evident that this has been brought to note and conquered by the very Christ that ascended uh, the cross. So. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, this is died. So we are not afraid from this. We are, as we, as the church say, it's a, we move from uh, from the earth to heaven because we believe in resurrection. And th this was clear even when Jesus uh, 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 raised Lazarus. Please look to this icon. I really like this icon because. In this icon, Jesus is so big compared to death, compared to our sin, compared to our faults. He is so big. Nothing can be compared with the true life and uh, the true uh, 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 light we get from the resurrection. I will continue to another, another saying. Uh, I leave this to everyone if you want to read it. George? Yeah, thank you, Amir. So we have another saying from uh, St. Athanasius um, from the homily on the passion and crucifixion of the Lord. Um, and they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. He did not suffer in any other place, neither was he crucified except in the place of the skull. This is identified by Hebrew mentors as the place of Adam's grave. They affirm that he was buried there after the curse, 
If it is so, I am amazed at the significance of that spot. For the Lord, wishing to renew the first Adam, had to suffer on it so as to tear down Adam's sin and remove it from his whole race. Inasmuch as Adam has previously heard the words, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. For this reason the Lord was thrown into the place in order to visit Adam and tear down his curse. Instead of, You are dust, and to dust you shall return, he, has, he says to him, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. And also arise and, and follow me, that you may no longer remain cast down on the ground, but ascend with me to heaven. For it was imperative that when the Saviour should arise, Adam and all who came forth from Adam should be resurrected with him. Um, and we see that on the icon to the right, uh, similar to the first one that uh, AK showed us. Um, it's nice how uh, when St. Athanasius says, uh, you were dust and from dust you shall, from dust you came and to dust you shall return. Um, he kind of compared this to our new resurrected status, which is, uh, I think AK was telling us before, it's a, uh, you are resurrection, you are life, and to life you shall return. Um, this is our, now our, our default state, um, that we, through the resurrection of Christ, we can uh, we can now become resurrected. Um, and I also like, and in the icon we see it's Adam and Eve, and, and he maybe he's mentioned Adam many, many times. And whenever I read Adam in any of these, uh, in these readings, I always think of myself, and it's not just Adam who was dead and became alive again. It's not just Adam who was raised from Hades and taken to heaven, but it's me. I'm, I'm the one that has been taken from death to life. And even if I'm in the, the midst of sin and in the dead of sin, the deadness of sin, um, Christ is still able to raise me and to give me life, life from death, life from deadness. <laughs> Thank you, George. And, and all of the people who read the Bible and they start to have the relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ, they have this feeling. They have the feeling that I was dead and resurrected. If you talk with anyone who come from other religion, to Christianity, he will say to you, I was dead and uh, became alive, or I was uh, blind and now I can see, and so on. And that's totally matching with the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, George. Andrew? Andrew? Okay, so the, another saying from St. Athanasius, again from his, his book on the Incarnation, which is a very famous book. Um, so it's on, on the verse from, uh, oh, death, where is your victory? So it says, now that the Savior has raised his body, death is no longer terrible. For all who believe in Christ tread him under as naught, and choose rather to die than to deny their faith in Christ. For they verily know that when they die, they are not destroyed, but actually begin to live and become incorruptible through the resurrection. Their contempt for death is so great that they even eagerly rush upon it and become witnesses for the resurrection the Savior has accomplished against it. And so death, having been conquered and exposed by the Savior on the cross and bound hand and foot, all they who are in Christ as they pass by trample on him and witnessing to Christ scoff at death, jesting at him and saying, what has been written against him of old? O death, where is thy victory? O grave, where is thy sting? And I think, like Uncle Amir was saying before, there, there's no other religion that has that's able to scoff at death in this way, to to make to have a song about like about death to say where's your where's your victory now, where is your sting? It's it's almost as if like um, as if watching a soccer game and you see your team the other team is is winning and winning then in the last minute your your team scores and like you you've won the game and you start to scoff at the other team you thought that there was victory. And actually, the victory is gone from them. And particularly, I love how St. Athanasius is saying, we actually don't only do it, well, we're not afraid of it, but we actually almost wish for it to come. And it reminds me, Uncle Amir, of the, the, the very last verses of the, of the Bible, Revelation, where Jesus is saying, uh, the, the one who testifies to, this, to these words is coming quickly. And then St. John responds by saying, even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. So there's, there's an earnestness for all of us, all Christians, that we are eagerly waiting for the Lord Jesus to come, whether it's in death or that he comes in his second coming because of the joy of the resurrection. And it's something that we don't have to feel when we're older, when we, when we approach death, yani if we're sick. But from now, uh, living in this period of the resurrection, we can feel this joy. And this is what we feel and uh live with in the church prayers and the church life use through the sacraments and every what we can see. 
the life giving power of God, this is for St. Cyril the Great. In what manner can man upon earth closed as he is with mortality, return to incorruption? I answer that this dying flesh must be made partaker of the life giving power which cometh from God. But the life giving power of God the Father is the only God begotten word, and him he sent to us as a savior and deliverer. And he became flesh in order that having implanted himself in us by an inseparable union, he might raise us above the power of death and corruption. That's what we take in Holy Communion. That's why he is implanted on us, in me and in you and in everyone comes to the Holy Communion. That's why we can't live without Holy Communion. We can't live without the sacrament because through the sacrament, we have our Lord Jesus Christ come to our souls and to our, to our uh, life and they take us out with his love and with his resurrection. For he clothed himself in our flesh that by raising it, raising his body from the dead, he might prepare a way henceforth by which the flesh which had been humbled unto death might return anew unto corruption. And the Paul testifies for as by man is death, which is talking about Adam, by man, our Lord Jesus Christ, is also the resurrection of the dead. The word, therefore, by having united unto himself that flesh which was subject unto death as being God and life drove away from it corruption and made it also to be the source of life. When therefore we eat the holy flesh of Christ, the savior of us all and drink his precious blood, we have life in us being made as it were, one with him and abiding in him and, and possessing him also in us. And how, uh, how, what we can say, that's very, big grace we have the holy communion and do we eat our lord jesus christ and we have him in us and this leads us in our life and leads us in every day of our life um so i just wanted to because we, we were discussing before before we did this presentation uh, just to think you know, because a lot of us when we have communion sometimes we we fall into sin after or there's a some and for some of us, we may begin to doubt. We might think, well, how can this be the true body and the, the powerful resurrected body of Christ that St. Cyril is claiming it to be if I go and fall into sin after? And St. Cyril is not saying, uh, this is what Uncle Amir was we were discussing before, he's not saying that that's it, we're going to live a perfect life that's without struggle and without um, without suffering. It, and it's it's a it's perfectly represented in the icon uh, that Uncle Emir has put in this slide where, yes, Christ is holding up Adam and he's raising him up, but he's also holding the cross as well. And I think that the, the power of the icon and, and the message that it's saying is my, when I fall into sin, even after communion or after having the baptism, this is my weakness, but I no longer have the bondage of sin over me. I'm no longer a slave to it. I'm able, I have the power now part of the resurrected power to, to get up again. Christ will pick me up again. So even though I fall, Christ will pick me up again. And uh, we were saying before, it reminds me of the verse from the uh, passage from Hebrews chapter 12, where Jesus, where, where, where the, the writer of Hebrews is saying, let us let go of, of the sin that so easily ensnares us and look unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. He's the one that started it. And definitely because he's raised from the dead, he was the one that's going to finish it. And it's an opportunity, I think, Uncle Amir and George, when we, when, when, especially in this time of, of, the, of the, the church's calendar, that when we do the procession, uh, when we do the procession with the cross during the liturgy, we're following, we're following Christ, we're following after the cross of Christ, we're following after his, his resurrected glory. Even if I fall, I get back up and I follow because he's the finisher of my faith. I'm not the finisher of my faith. Christ is the one that wrote it. And Christ will be the one that finishes it. And it's always through this 
partaking of the communion. I just felt, yeah, because I always get tripped up on thinking this. Thank you so much because it reminded me with this verse and it's uh, Hebrews 12, 2. I, I can read it for you. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself. Uh, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. And verse 4 is really important. You have not yet resisted, resisted to bloodshed striving against sin. So when we have our Lord Jesus Christ through the Holy Communion, it will lead us to resist against sin and the struggle against sin and to stop the sin and to lead us to grow in our knowledge and in our relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks, Andrew. That's why that's the verse Hebrews 12, 2 to 4. George? Uh, thank you, Andrew and, uh, and AK. Um, so now we're moving on to St. Cyril, um, who wrote uh, about uh, in, on the incarnation of the only begotten God, about the Christ risen from the dead is the root of the new creation. Um, and he says, when our Lord Jesus Christ tasted death for the sake of us all and even arose on the third day, he thus became the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep and a root to those who are created anew by him for life as a beginning of a, hum a new human nature, which has shed off corruption. Um, that's from, sorry, that's from on Isaiah. Uh, chapter 26. I mean, this one's from On the Incarnation of the Only Begotten God, which he says, for Christ is the man, the first man in the new creation, and the root and first fruits of those whose nature is changed by the Holy Spirit to the newness, to the newness of life. Henceforth, he conveys to the whole human race by means of communion with him and by grace, the incorruptibility of his body and the unchangeableness of his divinity. It's a big word. When Paul the divine knew this, he wrote saying, just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. Um, from 1 Corinthians. Uh, and I like this, uh, as, as the Andrew and AK were saying previously, that now we have, uh, we have new nature and we don't have to be uh, shackled by the bondage of, uh, of sin and of death. Um, and Christ can give us victory over, over sin. And it's not, we don't just have to struggle against sin and struggle against sin, but we can actually we can actually have victory over sin, um, and uh, in, in this new nature that we have for ourselves, which is uh, not corruptible, uh, and uh, yeah, incorruptibility. Um, and I'm sure Amir can explain to us the icon on the right. Uh, this icon here, we have oh, yeah. Jesus is the root or the the core of the tree, and we have uh, uh, around him is the disciples and the apostles. And then the church, and then comes even to our age now. And that's why we have one root and a new root. And as, uh, as George said, the first man in the new creation comes from as the first man, our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is the uh, uh, sayings from St. Cyril. Thanks, Andrew, and thanks, George. We are happy. Uh, because of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are wealthy because of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, because this resurrection leads our life and give us new life and the new view to life. And uh, through this, we live a nice and uh, growing spiritual life. Glory to be God in his church and his word, apostles, martyrs, saints, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father. Thanks, George. Thanks, AK. Thanks. Thanks.